Welcome to this video on the second half of the book of Genesis. I hope you have enjoyed the first part of it, the beginning stories of Genesis and the account of the life of Abraham. Well, Abraham dies in chapter 25 of Genesis, about halfway through the book, and chapter 25 begins the stories of Isaac's children, Esau and Jacob. Now, the, the rest of the book is going to follow the, the account of the life of Jacob and his family. Now, so uh, Esau and Jacob are twins, but Esau is born first, so he is the oldest, and he has certain rights because of that. But Jacob, Jacob's name means grabber, which means deceiver, someone who takes what he wants without asking permission. And Jacob is going to be very true to that. He is going to steal his brother Esau's birthright and his blessing from his father. So Jacob's life is characterized by a number of tensions in his story. One of those is between his brother Esau. Because of the tension between them, Jacob has to flee to the land of Abraham's family, and there he will, will meet his wives and get married, but he will be there for 20 years. But he knows at some point he has to come back and face Esau, and uh, that gives him great anxiety and concern. And that's one of the tensions that runs throughout the story, at least the first part of the story of Jacob. One of the other tensions in Jacob's story is the, uh, the tension between his wives. He is, he is in love with, with Rachel, and yet Laban, his uncle, uh, tricks him into marrying not only Rachel, but Leah, her older sister. But Jacob doesn't love Leah. He loves Rachel, but he's married to them both. And so there is some sisterly tension and rivalry between them that causes them each to give Jacob their servant girls also to be his wives. And Jacob will end up having 12 sons through his four wives. And that is very important, not only for this story, but for the later story, because these 12 sons will be the heads of the 12 tribes of the nation of Israel. Another of the conflicts that characterizes the story of Jacob is the, the tensions uh, within his sons and the problems of his, uh, his children. Uh, two of his sons at one point are going to murder all of the males in a, in a nearby town. Uh, they think they have, uh, they, uh, the, the men deserved it, but that's going to create some problems for Jacob. But the primary problem is that the sons are jealous of Joseph, who is the firstborn of Rachel, Jacob, their father's um, uh, beloved wife. And uh, Jacob is not a terribly good parent in that as his parents had showed, shown favoritism uh, between Esau and Jacob, so Jacob shows favoritism to Joseph, and it makes the rest of the siblings very jealous. So uh, the second part uh, of, the, of this half of Genesis, starting in chapter 37, is the account of Joseph. Joseph's brothers sell him to be a slave. He is taken to Egypt. They assume he is dead, but God, as it turns out, is with Joseph, and, and um, Joseph is very faithful to God. Uh, so we have this wonderful story about Joseph in the last part of the book of Genesis, and it is one of the great stories of providence in the entire Bible. We see the providence and care of God for Joseph throughout this story in spite of all sorts of uh, bad things that happen to him. God is with him, and God is going to raise him to a position of great authority and power. And that turns out to be very, very important in this because Jacob's family, meaning Joseph's brothers, are going to come to him at some point in the midst of a terrible famine, and they are going to, uh, to, to, to want to buy food from him. So we have this wonderful set of encounters between Joseph and his brothers when they come to Egypt. They don't recognize Joseph, but Joseph recognizes them. And Joseph is going to do a number of things to test them to see whether or not they have changed. And it, it turns out that they, that they have. They have, uh, they have grown up a little bit. They're a little bit different. And we see the great guilt that they still carried over what they did to Joseph. So in the end, Joseph uh, reveals himself to his brothers, and there's a bit of a reunion. They're a little bit anxious about seeing Joseph. That worries them a little bit. 
But at the end of the book, Joseph will say in chapter 50, You meant evil against me, but God meant it for good. So a wonderful set of stories, and and what's really important about the way uh, all of this evolves at the end of the book of Genesis is that uh, the family of Jacob is going down to Egypt, and they are going to live there. And God had said to Abraham that his descendants would be in Egypt for 400 years because the iniquity of the people in the land of Canaan was not yet complete. They were not sufficiently wicked for God to drive them out, and that was going to take 400 years. And so the story in Genesis ends with the entire family of Jacob going to Egypt, and they are going to live there for 400 years. But they go in as a family, about 70 people, but they are going to come out as a nation. And that is where we pick up at the beginning of the book of Exodus. So a wonderful story. Uh, Read the second half of the book of Genesis. I think you will enjoy it immensely.